April 16th, 2010, from the stylish high-tech underground studios of Ribbit Media in sunny Warwick, Rhode Island, this is News Undies. <laughs> April 16th, 2010, this is News Undies, all the news that shouldn't be news. I'm Paul Torville with these headlines. Poland learns important lesson about eggs and baskets, hopefully. Mike Huckabee tries to appeal to LGBT voters, likening them to incestuous polygamous drug users. Chinese earthquake competes with Icelandic volcano for disaster of the week. Justin Bieber. Hey gang, it's time for Celebrity Birthdays once again. I got my cake hat on, let's rock! For Saturday the 10th, Max von Sydow and John Madden. For Sunday the 11th, Oleg Cassini, Dead, and Ethel Kennedy. For Monday the 12th, Herbie Hancock and Tiny Tim! For Tuesday the 13th, Butch Cassidy, Dead, and Don Adams, Dead! I think my shoe may be ringing. For Wednesday the 14th, Ann Sullivan, Dead, and Kenneth Mars! <coughs> for Thursday the 15th, Leonardo da Vinci, Dead, and Roy Clark! For Friday the 16th, Peter Ustinov, Dead, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar! That's Celebrity Birthdays. I'm Paul Torval, and I'm done! We'll have stories in detail right after this. My, my normal holiday plans of nothing have really fell through this year. Oh, too bad. Too bad. Do you want me to sing you some Christmas carols? <laughs> I'd really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Senate GOP leaders are trying to gather support to block a financial reform bill promoted by Senate Democrats and President Obama. Republicans opposed to the bill have yet to offer anything better. In case you're wondering, that's not a change in tactic for the Republican Party. Amid calls from clergy, lay Catholics, and people outside the church for the resignation and or extradition of Pope Benedict XVI, the Pope himself has managed to refrain from admitting any actual events of wrongdoing on the part of the church, its leadership, or its customer-facing priests. In remarks Thursday, the Pope shamelessly whined about the church being under attack, then used carefully crafted phrases like, We Christians! to identify possible perpetrators of some unnamed sin, perhaps, and open ourselves to forgiveness rather than, say, arrest, charge, try, convict, and sentence in criminal court anyone involved in the actions or subsequent cover-ups, no matter how high up in the church they are. The Pope's remarks reeked of a ham-fisted damage control of a type rarely seen since former President Bill Clinton weaseled his way out of removal from office with his famous I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Right. Mega Piranha? Bipedal baby mill Kate Gosselin will apparently not be gracing the cover of Playboy. Aw, oh, that's too pointless. In 1952, the U.S. Congress designated an official National Day of Prayer. It was created about the same time that Under God was added to the Pledge of Allegiance and In God We Trust was added to paper money. Was this ever appropriate? Is it appropriate now? Here are Pig and Sheep with their thoughts. Not only is it appropriate, it's necessary. The only way Jesus will continue to bless America is if we pray, pray, pray. Pray for money, and cars, and houses. Pray for your team to win the big game. Pray, pray, pray. Nothing works like prayer. Amen. Woo! He is right about one thing. The efficacy of prayer is equivalent to the efficacy of nothing. Look, the government has no business being involved in your religious practices or beliefs. If you want to pray, pray. If you don't want to pray, don't pray. It's not the government's place to ask you to pray at all. 
let alone on a particular day. If you have any doubts about that, reread the First Amendment to the Constitution. That's what pig and sheep think. What are your thoughts? Email them to ovcomments at newsundies.com. And now, here's Moose Weintraub with the Sports Half Minute. Here's your Sports Half Minute. I'm Moose Weintraub. Underwater hockey, invented in England in 1954. Thanks, Moose. Always a great report from Moose. The maker of the simple, easy-to-use, and cheap digital camcorder known as the Flip has completely lost touch with what made it such a success. The new Slide HD camera is $279, $70 more than a more capable JVC unit with all the features you'd expect in a basic regular camcorder like optical zoom and a flip-out screen. The Slide HD does have the advantage of a fragile hinge and a complicated touchscreen interface, so that's good. We'll have your exclusive PassCast weather and the final news roundup right after this. You'll notice that when you watch News Undies, I'm always wearing a shirt from the Ursus Pacificus Kitsch Cave. Well, now you can too. You can help support News Undies by going to the Ursus Pacificus Kitsch Cave and getting some kitsch. And now, here's your exclusive past cast weather for the week ending Friday, April 16th, 2010. Florida had warm temps and scattered thunderstorms. That doesn't sound like Florida at all. The lower lakes saw rain and snow with cool temps. The Ohio Valley had scattered showers turning to warm temps. And that's your exclusive past cast weather. The National Day of Prayer. A German company has developed a cologne for men called... Wait for it. Vulva. The original formula contained a combination of urine, sweat, and something they call female arousal from women of all ages. What man doesn't want to smell like a... (laughs) Finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? Bacon-flavored baby formula is coming. J and D's, the same company which brought us bacon-flavored salt, bacon-flavored popcorn, and the inexcusable affront to any notion of health, bacon A's, is now moving in for the kill, so to speak, taking on the strategy of the Catholic Church, get them while they're young. Yes, it's not enough that we feed our children sugar-encrusted carbo-speed spaz flakes and something that could only be described as macaroni and salty yellow snot for the first 15 years or so of their lifetime with teeth, Now we're further entrenching the tendency toward obesity, type 2 diabetes, and heart disease by setting kids up with an insatiable hunger for salt and fat, essentially from the moment they pop out of the womb. And here I thought that with so many people getting on the recycled organic sisal welcome mat diet, the medical profession would be going the way of the blacksmith. Just so you know, there's nothing at all right about this product. The container features a cartoon of a piglet sitting on a blanket of bacon, sucking on a bottle full of pink liquid, presumably the bacon baby formula, The piglet is wearing a diaper held in place with a safety pin. The placement and orientation of the safety pin might lead someone to mistake it for something else. Something more, oh, Freudian. And in case all that escaped your notice, there's a big banner on the package which proclaims, quote, four nutritious servings of bacon in every scoop, end quote. Thank goodness for that. Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. If you see news that shouldn't be news, email your story tips to undies at newsundies.com. News Undies is a weekly show, and we'll be back on Friday, April 23rd with fresh undies. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might be convinced Kate Gosselin is a decent human being. Don't bank on that, though.